Hey GED students, Pam messaged me on the Light and Salt Learning Facebook page needing help with this tricky example from the counting lesson of the crash course. This is from the experience level practice. And I think that the hardest thing about this is just that they're trying to intimidate you with words. I mean, so many words everywhere. And something like this could come up on the science or the math test. So it's worth kind of getting through our intimidation here and checking it out. So let's go ahead and just read it first. And what I want you to do is make sure as I'm reading, you don't get overwhelmed by all this information. What you should be honing in on right now is what are they asking me to do or to find? Let's go ahead. Each part of the genetic code actually consists of two halves known as alleles. Offspring inherit one allele from each parent. Okay, that's neat. When determining the probability of offspring inheriting certain genetic traits, scientists use capital letters to denote dominant alleles, alleles that code for traits that are always expressed. They use lowercase letters to denote recessive alleles, alleles that code for traits that can be carried in genes without being expressed. For example, an individual might be heterozygous brown-eyed, meaning that their genes contain both an allele for brown eyes and an allele for blue eyes, big B, little b. But their eye color is brown. A certain pea plant can produce either dominant green peas, capital G, or recessive yellow peas, little g. Additionally, smooth peas are dominant, capital S, while wrinkled peas are recessive, lowercase s. How many different distinct genotypes of peas are possible? So first of all, this problem is real tricky if you don't have a science background, but let's go straight to the question before we get into that. Remember I asked you, what are we looking to do or to find? It says right here that the question is, how many different distinct genotypes of peas are possible? Okay, so genotypes. Uh, I mean, this whole reading explained it, but I, it was pretty confusing. So when I talk about a genotype, I'm talking about like this. This is a genotype right here. A genotype is a pair of alleles. Um, we use letters for alleles. So in this case, two alleles, one from mom, one from dad, make up your genotype. Okay. And if there are different capitalizations, like this one's big and this one's little, that means they, they uh, code for different traits. Uh, so for example, let's see what it says here. Their genes contain both an allele for brown eyes and an allele for blue eyes, uh, but the eye color is brown. Okay. So the dominant one is the capital and that's the one that's going to win. So that means that this big B here stands for brown. And when I say when, I just mean that's the one that's going to be expressed. So you see this person had an eye color of brown. Capital letters win. Capital letters show up uh, on the outside, not just on the inside of your genes. So that means this little guy's blue. So basically, if a person had this genotype, that means that they got the information from blue eyes from one parent, the information for brown eyes from another parent, and they have both of those both of that information in their genes, but the one that shows is the dominant one, in this case, brown eyes. All right. Whew. That was a lot of explanation. So let's get to our pea plants. Okay. We're looking for how many distinct genotypes of peas are possible. And this is a really interesting question because we actually have two uh, genotypes going on first. So let's talk about them or two genotypes going on here. It says a certain pea plant can produce either dominant green peas or recessive yellow green peas. So this is the first uh, genotype we want to look at. And when we look at that one, we're basically looking at the color. Okay, now you get one letter from mom and one letter from dad, but you know, we're not, we don't have a specific mom and dad here. We're not looking for a specific probability. There's no reason to bust out a Punnett square if you've heard of those. All we're looking for is all the possible combinations of these letters. And the letters they gave us for color were capital G or little g. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Well, you could get a dominant green from both of your parents, a big G uh, from both of your parents. So that'd be one way your genes could go. Or it would be possible to get a dominant from one parent and a recessive from another parent. Now careful, some people will want to do this 
uh, recessive and then dominant that way and treat it like a different combination, it's not. The results are effectively the same. You have one dominant, one recessive, that's the same genotype. So don't count uh, the other order as a new selection, it's not. And then the third possibility here is that you have both recessive. So what was recessive here? Yellow. So you have genes, both your genes from both parents are yellow. So there's three possibilities for your genotype for color. Three possibilities. And we said those are big G, big G, big G, little G, or little G, little G. Okay, now let's look at the next uh, choice here. We also are going to get a genotype for that wrinkled or smooth. I'm just going to go ahead and call that smoothness. Okay, so let's see. Uh, going back to the problem, it says additionally, smooth peas are dominant, capital S, while wrinkled peas are recessive, little s. Okay, so how many genotypes are possible in this case? Well, we could have um, a dominant from mom and a dominant from dad for a big S, little s. We could get a dominant from one parent and a recessive from another parent, so big S, little s, or we could get uh, two recessives, one from each parent. So we also have three choices for this. Now, if you've seen any of my counting videos, you know that each time we make a choice, we multiply. So for the color genotype, we have three choices. We're going to multiply that by the smoothness genotype for which we have three choices. And that's a total of nine possible choices. Nine possible choices. Now, some of you guys are going, Kate, how am I supposed to believe you that we multiply? Well, let me ha go ahead and I'll clear out what I've been doing here. And I'll just show you that indeed it does give us nine, even if we map it out. Nine is enough, um, small enough little section that I can show you what I mean. Okay, so let's imagine here we said for color we could have G big, 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 little, or little, little. And same thing with our... Um, wrinkled or smooth, so SS, and I'm just taking note of these so I can show you my work. Okay, so let's imagine that you were a big G, big G. If you were, there's still three possibilities for your smoothness. Your smoothness could be big S, big S, or you could have been a big G, big G with a big S, little S, or you could have been a big G, big G with a little S, little S. There's three possibilities. Now let's imagine that you weren't a big G, big G, but you were a big G, little G. Okay, so you could have a big G, little G with those two big S's. You could have a big G, little G with a big S and a little S. Or you could have a big G, little G with two little S's. And then same thing for that last selection. The little G, little G could be paired with the big two big S's. The little G, little G could be paired with a big S, little S or the little g, little g could be paired with two little s's. Now, again, Tricky took some background knowledge of me in genetics and how these genotypes work to really understand this reading. Even though all the information was in the reading, whew, it was really complex. Um, and then it took some background information with me for the subject of counting to be able to understand this. So a mm, lot going on. So if you found this complex, you're right, it's complex. But there are definitely one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine possible genotypes when we're talking about both color and smoothness. Mm. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.